Hi, my name is Fawad Motalabi. I'm a lecturer at Curtin University, Malaysia. And this is our networking lab. I'm here to give you a talk about networking applications. So let's start with our presentation, networking applications. My talk is going to show us about networks and how they affect our lives, the components of network, network representation and topologies, some common types of networks, internet connections, what are reliable networks, network trends, and network security. Networks affect our lives. In this day and age, no enterprise exists without a network. Why? Because communication is as important to us as we need air, water, food, and shelter. Without internet, very difficult to survive. Okay? Because of internet, we have got a world without boundaries. We have got global communities and human network. What happens in a small village affects the whole world in today's age. Let's look at some network components. Some network components that we have are servers and clients. And we have got machines that allow us as clients to access the server. Okay, an example of a server may be email server, web server, or file server. Now, what are these machines that allow us to access? If we don't have these machines, we may have a peer-to-peer -peer network where just computers can be connected to each other and access each other's resources. We can also have end devices, like in this diagram you can see my local area network has got a device which is a computer. Another device which may be a IP telephone connected to the internet network. The circular device is called a router. Over here in the middle you can see four routers, part of internet network. What does a router do? It connects different networks outside to other networks inside. Here are some network intermediary devices. We got router and we got a switch. A switch is used to connect within a local area network all the devices to each other. A router is used to connect an internal network to an outside network. We can also say a router is used to connect two different networks together, and a switch is used to connect two similar networks together. Besides that, we got a wireless router, we got firewalls, and multi-layer switch. Now I'm going to show you what these devices look like. I'm going to show you some of our networking components which we call intermediary devices. As you can see, these are some of our networking devices. We got routers, we got switches, okay? The two main devices, we got more of it. More routers and more switches. Not just one kind different kinds of these intermediary devices. These are heavy equipment and your internet is made possible by routers like this. Your downloads is made possible by routers like this. When you are accessing the World Wide Web, your request goes through routers, which is outside network. And to connect your internal network, you have to use devices like this, which is your switch. This switch makes your Ethernet or local area network possible. Now let's continue with our presentation. We also have cables that make networking possible. These cables 
uh, metal wires. There are also fiber optic glass or plastic fibers. And we also have wireless transmission. So we have some network representation and topologies that I would like to show you. These representations are given to you as computers, intermediary devices, mainly routers and switch, and cables. So when you want to draw a network topology, you have to use these representations. Like this, you can see how complicated a network can get. Showing you some different types of networks. Okay, we got small home, we got small office, home office, we got medium large, and we got a worldwide, wide area network. Okay, so our network can be a local area network or a wide area network. A wide area network is a network infrastructure that spans a wide geographical area. So what makes our internet possible? When you have the, the combination of all the local area networks and wide area networks joined together, that makes your internet possible. How do we connect to the internet? There are different ways we can connect to the internet. Let's look at some of these ways. We can have cable connection, we can have DSL, cellular, satellite, dial-up telephone was the old age, okay? So it's very easy to connect to the internet as long as we have got a connection to our internet service provider. Depending on what we need, we can have a higher bandwidth, dedicated connection, or managed services. If you want to have a very good connection for big enterprises like institutions, universities, they go for dedicated leased line, which is a direct connection to the ISP. In today's age, we have got convergence of network, where our data, video, voice converges on one cable. That is why you need a cable with high bandwidth. Example, a fiber optic cable. That is why streaming in today's age is possible. We can watch Amazon Prime, Netflix through our fiber optic cables, which come straight to our home. So data, voice, and video has to be carried using a single medium. And the best medium for that is our fiber optic cable. A good example is what we use here, which is Unify in Malaysia. Your network should be reliable. Now, what do we mean by reliable? That means it should be fault tolerant, it should be able to add devices to it, it should guarantee a good quality of service, a good bandwidth, and it should be secure. These are the four main important aspects of network architecture. Some of the trends that we have in these days is Bring your own device. We also have online collaboration, video communications, and cloud computing. Whichever place we go, we ask for Wi-Fi link. We don't need to use anybody's devices. We have got our own devices, and we link to that network. Some devices that are trending are laptops, netbooks, tablets, smartphones, and e-readers. Uh, in this time and age, when we are living under a pandemic, we can see that we can collaborate online by using certain online tools. For example, using Cisco, WebEx Teams, and other uh, applications like Zoom to collaborate and communicate with our colleagues online. Or in my case, when I run a class with my students and other lecturers at our university, uh, instead of doing face-to-face -face learning, we can do an 
online learning through uh, WebEx Teams. We can also access our internet. Another way of accessing is through our actual power line. The way that you get your electricity, you can also send internet signals. The best thing about this is you don't need to regenerate your signal. Your power line will regenerate the signal. We also have wireless broadband. 5G is still in experimental phase and many people have started adopting it. Another aspect of network is security. Security is very important. When I say security, I'm talking about external threats. So you need to make sure that uh, you have got a firewall which protects your internal network. Internal network should also be protected from internal threats. Some of the aspects of security which you have to protect from is viruses, worms, and Trojan horses. The difference between viruses and worms is both of them are, of course, uh, harmful programs, but worms self-replicate. They make a copy of themselves and they spread around. A Trojan horse is a program that appears to be useful, but actually it's gathering information for you. Uh, for, for itself and later on it can pass that information and it can do some damage by stealing your information. We also have spywares, adwares, we got zero day attacks, threat actor attacks. You can know more about these by going through some videos on YouTube. As a network enthusiast, you have to make sure that you have security solutions, both for internal as well as external attacks. You should have a dedicated firewall. You should have access control lists. You should have intrusion prevention systems. And you should also employ virtual private networks. That brings us to the end of our presentation.